Brad, thanks for being here. Appreciate you uh, spending some time with us. I know it's uh, a challenge to get it away for a day to come to a conference like this, but uh, we all uh, appreciate your, your efforts to come out here. Uh, um, I know there's a bio of you in the, the handouts we, we put out there, but can you tell us a little bit about what you do and your responsibilities at Dayton? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's exciting to be here and talk to all of our supplier partners, or maybe you are. Um, so in my current role at uh, Daimler Truck, I head up the DTA parts aftermarket parts marketing team. Um, so we handle everything from our supplier relationships and product proposals we offer into all the training and retail efforts of our dealers, our dealer relationships. So really anything to do with parts outside of sales and supply chain, pricing, purchasing, we handle all the marketing. Not, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> is, there a, <laughs> yes. is there an average day in your world, if, 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 or is it every day a little bit different? Uh, you know, I, I would say every day there's always a dealer involved, there's always a supplier involved, there's always some type of fire that we put out. Yeah. Um, we're about halfway through the program. Uh, has anything you've heard this morning through the program caught your ear and said, oh, that's interesting? Or? Yeah, well, we were talking backstage, I think it was interesting, was the, uh, the other three gentlemen up here for the uh, president and CEO panel. I think most of uh, Daimler trucks' responses would be very similar in terms of what's in our minds and what we see for 2023. Um, the other thing I thought was interesting that, um, was someone mentioned data. And you know, it's, having access to data is great. Uh, being able to use it is how you create the power of data. So I think that's something that we'll talk a lot about today too. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, if I'm around in 10 years, I'm, I'm grateful if I'm up here on the stage. Hopefully, I won't have to say the word pandemic, but we did have a pandemic recently, and hopefully 10 years we won't be talking about it. But we had a pandemic which impacted uh, your workforce and where they're working from, it impacted the supply chain, it impacted the pricing. Um, uh, how did you and your team, I'll start with you and your team first, how did you manage to use all those, those variables in the last two, three years? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things for the Diamond Truck team and my team specifically was increasing the amount of meaningful communication that we would have. I mean, we all know that you sit in the office a lot and you have a lot of uh, small talk um, and a ton of meetings that we all probably go to. I think there was a much, uh, in, there was increased uh, focus on when you're having a virtual meeting, you usually talk about the topic at hand, not, you know, what happened with the ball game last night or right. what kids are doing. So, uh, from that case, I think we got much more efficient in running the business, maybe, uh, but we also lost some of the uh, interpersonal skills in, in relationship we had. So. That's probably how we handle it mainly, I would say. How do, you, uh, how do you keep your team motivated when you're going through all those issues like that? You're not seeing them face to face every day? You mean outside of virtual happy hours? <laughs> <laughs> those work for you? Uh, yeah, they did for about the first month, right? Um, yeah, I, I think the biggest thing, right, is setting goals, um, making sure that they understand that uh, the relationships are important, um, that we're all here for a common goal. I mean, Diamond Truck in general, in terms of selling trucks and selling parts, are two main revenue streams. Uh, we get a lot of great leadership from our top down. Uh, but the biggest thing is just caring about people, right? And understanding that, yes, there is a pandemic going on. And taking care of your family is first to take care of yourself, both from a business and commercial standpoint, but also mental health is very important. And then just giving them the support they need, right? Whether that's a quick phone call or whether that's a text or whether that's a four-hour long discussion on uh, should we come back to the office or not 17 times. Uh, but just being there for them, I think, is the biggest thing. Many Zoom calls with kids out in the last couple of years, which is a, a different, uh, a different phase we're going through there. What did you learn about your your, uh, your suppliers or your dealers? Uh, how, 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 the, how did you get through that process with them? Because you have the same communication issues. And yeah, I think that the biggest thing for us as a team, and when I say team, we talk about DC parts. Isn't just the diamond truck employees, right? It involves all of our dealers. It involves all of you, our supplier partners. And really, you know, I would say pulling back the curtain, you know, it's a joke where, hey, someone showed up with their PJs or their kid was on the phone. And really being more human with each other and, and being more transparent, right? We understood that to get through what we went through, whether it was the pandemic in 2020, whether it was the supply chain issue in 2022, we had to be more partners, right? Not just a, a customer in a relationship like that, but we had to become true partners. And I think for us at DC Park, with all of our suppliers and our dealers, we really truly did become partners. So it brought you closer to the one hundred percent. One hundred percent. And I forgot to mention, uh, please uh, text in your questions, and uh, if we have some time, we'll get to your questions for Brad. Um, the 
Was there a situation or it was probably more than one the last couple three years where uh, a supplier did something you, that was kind of out of the box that you weren't expecting that really helped you and your team that uh, you know, we didn't think about that or yeah. they really stepped up? Uh, uh, well, that's a good question. And I think I can multiple opportunities um, or multiple situations where the supplier stepped up, but I think it was the data, right? There was no, hey, I'm not going to quite share all this because I'm not sure what you're doing. You know, we all went through some type of allocation at one point or another. Years. And really, that, that willingness to share uh, and be transparent about you know, what is the situation at your company, at your facility? Do you have enough people working today to build the product that we need? And a lot of times before the pandemic, I would say there was a little bit of keeping your guard up. Uh, and I really feel like a lot of our suppliers stepped up and being open. I would say, hey, I, I'm, not, I'm not building the product because I don't have enough people here because I had 14 people off this week on uh, you know, COVID issue. And that, uh, that was really great to see them step up, be honest, um, and be transparent with the information. And really, yeah, just be a partner so that we can get our dealers through, which means for us, we got to get our dealers' parts, so we can get our customers' parts, so we can get trucks back on the road, and literally, you know, keep the world moving. Right. If you look at that, um, all your suppliers, obviously, you gave a huge corporation, you've got many suppliers, but um, how many of them are where you want them to be as far as sharing data? 50% of them or 70% of them or where, where you want them to be here? Well, of course, 100%. 100%. Everyone is. Yeah, I, I, I think a lot of that has to do with, uh, it's you know, it's a daily thing, right? And that's not just a one, it's a two-way street. We need to share data, they need to share data and information. I, I would say for the most part, we're on a good uh, level ground um, with all of our suppliers. I mean, and I think it changes day to day, right? Depending on the issues that are faced with, um, if there's, if Going on, and sometimes that changes things, but overall, I mean, I think most of our suppliers are in that partner category um, and willing to you know, do what it takes to, to move the business along. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the can company, you've done uh, I mean, at least three studies in the last uh, four or five years on e commerce um, what fleets are doing online, what they're not doing online, what their plans are down the road, what they're buying, what frequency, what they look for, and um, we've seen uh, uh, an increase in the use of e commerce to buy parts. And, plans to use it more in the future. Uh, I think we actually under, underestimate in some ways what the growth of e-commerce is going to be because I think a lot of people with hair like me are filling out the surveys and when they're gone there's got to be people with uh, not gray hair not quite like me and, uh, or, <laughs> that are very used to being that e-commerce will see grow even more. What, what is, uh, I'm going to give Daimler as an example, but uh, um, how, do you, how does Daimler see uh, e-commerce as part of your plan going forward? And, yeah, I mean, Dyler Trucks, uh, DCA Parts specifically, sees e-commerce as a major part of our going market strategy. I mean, I think most people are familiar with Accelerator as our tool that we've right. been using. Uh, we stood that up in uh, 2018, 2019. It's been out there as an active tool since 2020. Uh, I, and it did help us get through the pandemic, for sure. Um, and we see that continuing to grow in our marketplace, whether it's whether it's an age demographic, whether it's a you know, technology demographic, but you know, if we look at other areas of our consumer world, um, e-commerce is here to stay. Right. And it's here to stay in our industry as well. It's, and, and it's really finding out how do we leverage that best with the traditional models, right? When we go to a dealer, I was at a dealer last week, um, and understanding, you know, there's five parts counter people sitting there, and two of them say, you know, I put it on my phone, two of them says, uh, put it on my computer, and one says, well, why don't you make a call? So you have to still do all of those activities, whether it's an email, a phone call, Hopefully no one's faxing, so people still do. Yeah. Um, but e-commerce is a major part of what we see going forward. <laughs> and we really see that as not a shift from relationship-based selling and, and relationship business, but more of an add-on to that, right? It's a, it's a, but it's an efficiency improvement too, right? You know, a lot of times when we go to dealers, I don't want to do it. Well, you can either sit on a customer, maybe not a dealer, say a customer, you can sit on the phone for 10 minutes, wait for them to answer your phone call, or you could have ordered those parts online, you knew when they were going to be there, they had a price all in, you know, three, three minutes or less as opposed to waiting for 10 minutes. So it's definitely part of what we see as our business and will continue to grow as we go forward. So the, the dealers that are a little bit reluctant about that push them to the e-commerce, how do you convince them that it's got to be a mix? You gotta, you're not going to walk away from your relationship, but you got to have this other tool in your bag if you want to play seriously down the road. How do you convince them of that? Or? Yeah, I would say if you, if for the diamond truck dealers is really all I can speak to. Yeah, I would say most, if not all of them, I would almost say all of them are on our accelerator platform. Um, 
they're using you know, their simple rewards as one of our tools that we offer discounts for them. They can have these accelerator. Um, it's usually more of a customer situation where the customer might be a little uh, skeptical of using the e commerce platform. And that, I mean, they still have their traditional methods. Right. Um, but if you go to somewhere like that, they didn't pick up the phone yesterday. Guess what picked up? The accelerator picked up. So, Sorry, all of that. You know, it's more of a, I think it's a familiar relation and a comfortable thing. Right? If that everybody started using Amazon right away, we probably all use it.